I have everything, I'm ready, I'm going live. Okay. I wasn't talking to you, I was talking to the screen. Just for now for people to join me. That's all I want. It's not to be alone. Um, oh, I've lost the lid. Lost the lid for that one. Using all that, I remember. A, B, C, D. Hello, everybody. Just doing a bit of admin while I'm waiting for you all to join. Uh, yes, good, 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 good. Thank you. I stole this out of Nigel's side of the cupboard of the wardrobe today. So he stole one of my t-shirts, I think, just as punishment. It is, I was feeling, I need the warm. It's a little bit too small, actually, because it is Nigel, so I have stolen it from him. Um, so, but hey. Hello, hi, hi. You started watching October by mistake. I noticed someone put a little wave on a different video that wasn't this one, and I did think, uh oh, they're watching the wrong one. But you found us, so that's good. Hello, 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 hi, 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 everybody, hello. To all 23 of you, hello. I'm excited too. I enjoy this box very much. Uh, and I have reacquainted myself with some old loves in here, which I have enjoyed very much. Oh, okay. You, I, I'm assuming, Gavin, that you're going to keep trying to wash the off because it does stick around. Quite tenacious. Hello, hi, hi, hello, hi, hi. How are you doing? Hi, how's it going? Hi, hello. Evening, hi. Let's wait for more people to go on. We want more than 28. We want loads. We want 288. Well, welcome back, Tina. Nice to see you. Lots of old loves in this first half. Agreed. And then the second half goes a bit different. A bit modern, a bit weird, a bit strange. Not too strange, though. Oh, Christopher's going to be going to be sniffing along with us for the first time. Exciting! We'll get your real live first time thoughts. Um, I don't know who I've got from Essential this evening. I will announce them as they were. Oh, it's Chelsea! Literally right on time as I said that. It's Chelsea. Hi, Chelsea. Hello. Long time no see. It's been all of like two days. <sighs> Trying to catch up. Uh, okay. Well, we've got a couple of people who've not opened their boxes yet, and they're going to be just sort of doing them as we go, which I think is quite fun. Um, how is Pugsley? He is fine. He is happy because Nigel has been off work this week, which means he can stay with Nigel rather than me when I'm working from home because Nigel is his favourite. Uh, Chelsea, there's a few people who are watching the wrong live and she's just bringing them over. Okay, that's hilarious. Uh, hi, Nick. Hello, Nick. How are you? Hope you're okay. Good to see you. Hi, Susie. Can we all give Susie a massive happy birthday? Because it was her birthday this week. Hi, Susie. Happy birthday. Ooh. A queen must be celebrated. Hi, Ben. How are you? How's it going? Sean's here. Hello. Hi. Oh, we're at 42. Hi, Hester. Hello. Lots of happy birthdays for Susie, please. Thank you very much. Those are mandatory. You must say them. Otherwise, I won't continue with the live. Sorry. Right, let's get to 50 and then we'll go. Once we've got 50 of you, we're going to get going. We're going to get going. I think we've got a few people who are watching the old live. And we need to get them on this one. I always jinx it by setting a number, don't I? I say 50 and then we don't get 50. We've got to get 50. 44, we're creeping up. Yay, this is what I want to see. Lots of celebrations for Susie because she is amazing. Okay, I can sense that there is a lot of excitement for this first half of the, uh, the box. Um, I'm very excited to reveal it because I've enjoyed a lot of these actually. Now I would say there were two of these, hmm, two of these that I wear and two that I like but I don't wear that often. I know, two lives in one week then, it's just, you know, I can't stop it, I just have to go live. So it's like a compulsion. If you missed us, uh, we did a, a live with Essential on Tuesday for Bougie Bougie, our candle brand, which is very fun and exciting. We got to talk to Chelsea about 
her favourite candle, which is Queer Culture, um, which is really fun. You can find that all on Instagram. Ah, I'm glad you liked it, Susie, and it was a great way to celebrate your birthday, to have these fragrances. Right, one more, and then we're going to get going in the box, because we're at 49. 49 is not a good number. We have to round it up. Come on. Whoever you are, straggler, joining at 50. Come on. We are waiting for you. Keep all of the happy birthdays rolling in for Susie, please. Some amazing happy birthdays. So many. I've managed to lose a person since I moaned about us not getting to 50. Yes, this is a very Susie Nightingale box, I would say. Especially the first half. Okay, we're at 50. Yay! I waited to 50. I thought if I go quiet for a second, then we'll get the 50th person and then we'll go. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the warm reveal for the first half of our warm box A to D. Um, this will be an approximately 30 minute live. Yeah, etc. Very funny. I'll probably go longer than that. Uh, there's no right or wrong. We're going to talk about the fragrances, have a little bit of uh, a discussion about what they mean and how they fit with the genre. We will uh, also pull in some comments from the group and also talk about your comments as we go. Um, and um, we will um, share all of our thoughts and then reveal the fragrances. Uh, please feel free to interact and I have... So for the best questions or comments that we get today, I will give away five of next month's Gourmand box, which I'm also very excited about because Gourmand. So, excuse me, that's Nigel trying to be quiet in the background and failing miserably. So let's talk about warm. What does warm mean? Because warm is probably not a word that you come across in perfume very often. So warm is the word that we are using to replace the word oriental. Why? Well, for several reasons. Uh, for several reasons, the word oriental is no longer fit for purpose. Number one, for many Asian people, it's an offensive term, plain and simple. Um, it has a lot of colonial undertones to it. It's very much a white man's fantasy of a particular part of the world, which also happens to be a very vast past part of the world, made up of many different countries and cultures. And to classify all of that as the Orient is very out of touch. And I think that's probably a polite way of saying it. Um, and I think, you know, when you think about what is described as the Orient, um, you have India and you have China and you have Japan and you have Korea and you have... Malaysia and all these other countries which are just so so different that they can't really be lumped together so it's kind of a thing that doesn't really fit anymore acts a bit out of touch and also it's probably not a very nice word to put it politely. I also feel as a white person it's probably not my place to say too much on the subject other than I've heard a lot of people uh, who are Asian say they feel uncomfortable with the word and I think that's enough for us to move on and the industry should do so. Number two, it means nothing to consumers. Literally nothing. The word oriental doesn't actually describe how these fragrances smell, especially considering just how vast a genre it is. And you'll see that in these fragrances that we've been smelling. But that word doesn't really, it doesn't really explain anything. And actually when we're thinking about um, fragrances as a consumer product in a store, as an experience, when you're going to purchase a fragrance, if someone says this is an oriental, what does that mean to somebody who doesn't know what an oriental is or hasn't experienced that fragrance family before? It doesn't really explain it. So that's why I think there's another reason why it's not fit for purpose. So the industry is moving very slowly away from this word. The fragrance industry does move quite slowly in these matters, unfortunately. Michael Edwards, who has created the fragrance wheel and the classification system for fragrance, announced earlier this year that his system will no longer use the word oriental for these reasons and we'll now use the word amber. So we use warm and amber interchangeably. We like warm because I think warm describes the general feel of these fragrances. They are warm, they are cozy, but amber is also okay. So when you hear amber, that's probably the industry word. Warm is what we've decided we like to call them. And we will use those interchangeably. So this brings us back to the question that I asked earlier. What is a warm fragrance? 
Well, it's simply a fragrance that fo focuses on spices and resins and balsams and amber as an accord, which is an accord of benzoin, labdanum and vanilla, a very particular accord, which I will come to later, and also vanilla. So it's all about coziness and warmth and spice and resins and balsams and blah, blah, blah. And the whole idea about these fragrances is that they're very warm, they're opulent, they feel fiery, they're cozy, they're often quite sexy, they're bold, brassy and intense. And these are what I like to think of as the comfort blanket scents, the sit by the fire in warm knitwear type of scents. So the genre actually started in the early 1920s uh, when perfumers and perfume houses were looking to the East for inspiration creating fragrances that were inspired by faraway places, hence the use of the original term, which I'm no longer going to use. They also had a big resurgence in the late 70s and 80s, uh, and were sort of, because big, bold, brassy, heavy fragrances were kind of the thing then. Um, and in this box, we're taking an exploration of all things warm, starting with four fragrances that are absolute classics, and none of which were created on this, in this millennium. They were all created in the last millennium. Very interesting. So, I'm just going to go to some questions now because I realised I talked for a little bit. Mia says, Amber, interesting, does it need to have amber in then? No, it doesn't need to have an amber accord in the fragrance to be considered as amber. That is now the umbrella term for what was the O word before. Um, interesting background and explanation of the name change for the genre. Thank you very much. Uh, I think it's quite a sensitive topic and I think people are very resistant to the change because we've always called it that. But if we always thought with that mentality, we would never change and we would never progress. And I think if there's a group of people who say, this is an outdated term, it has quite negative connotations, we don't like it, we think it's offensive, we should probably think, okay, are we really that attached to a word? Can we not change it? Can we not find something that works better? And then you add to the fact that it doesn't make any sense to people in the shops, on the shop floor. So there you go. Susie says, no need for the O word anymore. And what did it mean anyway? Agreed, agreed. Does Nigel have a wobble board? Someone said, I don't know. I don't think so. I think Pugsley is scratching at the sofa. I think that's what he's doing. And Nigel has got his earphones in, so I don't think he can hear that Pugsley's doing that. And I'm trying not to communicate too much with my eyes because I'm learning to be a more calm person. <laughs> uh, Susie says, Amber is a pretty loose term as well. To be honest, it's not a single ingredient. It's a cord that perfumers make to create warmth. Absolutely. Um, we need to respect that, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. So that's what warm Amber is. I'm using warm. I like the term warm a little bit more, I think, because all of these fragrances have a warmth to them. But we must remember, as with all things fragrance families, um, they are that they are there is an overlap. They all kind of uh, have this. This is kind of like a massive Venn diagram, really, isn't it? There you can have floral warm fragrances. They used to be a different name for them, which used the O word because it works nicely together. I used to call them florientals, which obviously works together nicely. And you can't call something a form or a flamber, which I guess, you know, we've lost that. But hey, it's it's worth it in the uh, in the pursuit of rightness and uh, sensitivity and uh, good, uh, brilliant words that make sense. Um, but maybe we could call it a flom or a flamber. Who knows? We'll think about it. Um, I've got my point. We're talking about overlap. Yes, sorry. I got really distracted by Florm and Flamber because it's quite funny. Um, can you get Nigel a Wobble Wolf for Christmas? Absolutely not. That's a no. Um, so there's lots of overlap. So we will have some in here that are a bit more floral. There are some that are a bit more gourmand. Just complete overlap. So it's not a watertight system that says this is this. Um, you know, this is a warm, this is a green, this is a floral. They all kind of do different things because the fragrance is not just one smell. Anyway, let's move on. Let's go and talk about fragrance A. Flamba sounds like a euphemism for a part of the anatomy. It is. It is very important for you to take good care of your flamba. Uh, if you don't take good care of your flamba, it may become diseased and then obviously removed. You have to have it removed, uh, which is never good because what are you going to do without your flamba? Um, pioneer and copyright flamba. Yeah, I'm going to have to do that now. I came up with it first and this has been recorded, so none of you can steal it. Okay, let's do fragrance A. I'm ready. Have you got your boxes? Have you got your boxes? Let's do A. Where did I put my tester strips? Where did I put my tester strips? Where did I put my tester strips? I don't know. I don't know where I put them. Let's just use these ones. I found some more. Let's do fragrance A. Okay, fragrance A. I'm giving it a spritz. 
So Carol says they're olfactory markers of voluptuous longings. Oh, hello, Carol. To a young, mousy woman of 70s and 80s, brought up by a Victorian grandma, but these fragrances were so attractive but totally scary. You need confidence to carry them off. I love statement fragrances, this, but still cannot rise to any of A to D. Carol, I love that little insight. I think that's so true. They really are statement fragrances and something almost aspirational. Carol, have a box. I enjoyed that. Message essential, you've won a Gourmand box for free. Uh, right, let's go for A. Yes, please make sure you look after your flamber and then spray fragrance A, please. Um, a has lovely floral on blotter, says Gavin, but it gets much more down and dirty on skin. Love it. Yeah, yeah, it does get pretty dirty. Um, flambe is a name which makes you think of warmth and heat, indeed. There's a note in A that reminds me of one of the last sample perfumers that I have, but always give me a headache. Possibly Load Ombre by La Sample Perfumer, which was one of the first proper amber fragrances. Um, it smells very similar to that. Uh, love A, so warm and spicy. It's the king of amber, never done so bold. Indeed, it is beautiful. So this fragrance is an amber. So this is a really good place to start because the genre kind of, I guess, centers on amber. So while the genre itself is now called amber, it's also a very specific style of fragrance. It's an accord made of benzoin, and labdanum and vanilla, so resins and spice. It smells very warm and sweet and it's kind of glowing like natural amber, hence the name. Nobody's ground down any of those like Jurassic Park ambers with the mosquitoes in. No, that's not what it is. It's just meant to give that glowy feel. And it smells sweet, it's resinous, it's a little bit sticky smelling, a little bit sappy, uh, and then it's got that creaminess of vanilla and the warmth and spice. Um, and this is a really good example of a quite a straightforward um, amber, but it's got, you know, it's got a heft to it. It's got a dirtiness. It's got some spice. Um, so I think this is one of the greatest ambers from a house that's made its uh, name creating opulent warm fragrances and is very well known for it. Um, so in the group, uh, Xenia called it a multi-dimensional fragrance saying it transported her to a Marrakesh souk. And Hester said the overall impression is like opening an old wooden box that's contained spices for several generations and carries the memory of them all. And Gavin said it was like a battered leather armchair by a roaring fire in a wood panelled room, which I loved. I thought those were really, all really, really um, great descriptions. Um, Ellie says it's not as uh, not as beastly as it once was. Uh, Anna didn't like it. it. Made her feel like she cut up, dried up, cinnamon stick, and died. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that, Anna. Um, it's Wendy says it's beautiful, not what you usually smell. Susie says dry, simmering heat that sizzles you. A slight boozy naughtiness. Uh, like on the bottle that smells like curry on my skin. Interesting. It smells the way Tesco's finest Moroccan chicken soup tastes. Spicy. That's very specific. Um, Sarah has a 10 month old who's listening to Thomas intently. I'm glad because I can't normally get kids to listen to me. I've got a collection of nephews and nieces and none of them listen to me. Uh, definite touch of sexy church. Absolutely. Two things that always go together. Um, Aline likes the trajectory. Sexy priest, presumably. Yet to meet one, I'll be honest. Uh, it's a bit boozy chocolate orange to me. Nick, that sounds perfect. I will eat a boozy chocolate orange any day. I have a long standing argument with my friend that a chocolate orange is one portion and that it is something you eat in one sitting. She says it's not, I disagree. So this smells like uh, very rich, intense spices. I think it glows as a perfume. It feels very resinous and solid. There's also this savoury facet to it, a saltiness. Perhaps it's like some sort of salted biscuit of some sort. Um, and it's these glowing embers of amber. It's not necessarily like uh, it's on fire, but it's just like it was on fire a while ago and now it's just kind of smouldering. I think it's quite linear. What you smell at the beginning is pretty much what you smell later on to my nose. Um, and I know lots of people love this. For me, I think amber, like straight up ambers, it's like, for me, it's like a bit like risotto. You know, like risotto tastes good for like three mouthfuls and then you're like, wow, this all tastes the same. Um, and you get a bit bored for it. Maybe it's just my ADHD brain who's like, oh my God, this is the same. I cannot stand this. My brain is understimulated. I find amber a li little bit like that. It's a bit like the risotto of perfume. Great, but not for me. Um, but I know love people love this. It's such a cult fragrance. And I had to include it because it's a perfect example of an amber. I respect it even though I won't wear it. And also I think really it's a really good start to show how these fragrances uh, evoke warmth. I think there's nothing better than that than in this particular fragrance. Uh, Raz El Hoot Spice, uh, Raz El Nahoot Spice Blend. 
Michelle hates risotto. It's, I, I'm kind of like, I don't hate it, but I'm like, I want more from it, you know? I want it to be, after like four spoonfuls to be a different flavour. Um, I said for 10 months, oh, agree with you. You wouldn't eat just one segment of orange. So why do that with a chocolate orange? Exactly, Siobhan, exactly. My friend really doesn't understand. Uh, Charles is also with us. It's one of your five days, says Anna. Brilliant. You guys, so I knew you'd all be on board. I knew you'd be all on board. It's more licorice on the blotter than on the skin. Yeah, I de definitely get that, Hester. There is like this anise facet, but it doesn't really come through on skin for me either. Um, Ellie's just said risotto and chips, and now I feel like I'm missing out. That's a revelation. Has it got tobaccos? I'm getting an Embassy Regal vibe. Potentially, I totally get that. Um, dries down quite sweet. Yes, totally, the vanilla really comes through. Benzoin's also quite sweet. Um, how can I be friends with this person? She's actually my best friend and she may be on this live. Make yourself known, Louise, if you are here. Um, good risotto is lovely, but it needs lots of cheese and other yummy things in it, so not just the same all the way. Mm, I am yet to try a great risotto. I've had a good risotto. I haven't had a life-changing risotto. Okay, do you want to know what this fragrance is? Do you want to know? I think some of you may know already, but I'm ready to show you. Let's do the damage. Sophie says a rum and coke. Sophie, I get that. I totally get that, actually. I get the rum and coke thing. Okay. I love how we're having two conversations at once here. We're having a conversation about this fragrance, but also a very in-depth analysis about risotto. And can I just say I love you guys for that. I really, really love, love you guys for that. Um, Aline is telling us it's all about stock. And I think you might be right, Aline. I think you might be right. Um, Hester's going to make me a risotto. I'm, I'm fully on board with that, Hester. I will be round in 25 minutes. I've just got to do this, like, thing, quick thing about fragrance first. Risotto, no, says Anna. Very funny. 10 out of 10 for that. Okay, let's go with what the fragrance is. It is Serge Routens. I think this is the third Serge Routens we've done in our boxes. Um, this is the Ombre Sultan uh, Eau de Parfum by Serge Routens. It came out in 1993, I believe by perfumer Christopher Sheldrake. Um, it is 99 pounds for a 50 ml Eau de Parfum. Uh, this one carries its name well, I think. It really is the king of all ambers. It's hot, fiery, spiced and intense, and it captures that rich tapestry of colors and smells uh, in his uh, Serge Routens spiritual home of Marrakesh. He's gone to Morocco and he's, I think I said this before, built this house that he's still building that's meant to be insanely beautiful in Marrakesh, and a lot of his inspiration comes from Morocco. I think it's one of Lutens' most iconic fragrances and arguably the greatest straight-up amber there is. It's all about the stock, and this one has good stock. Aline says it's her favourite house. My children used to say it's too much of the same taste. Agree, I'm on board with your children. I've used a lot of this bottle. No, I haven't used a lot of this bottle. Uh, Essential sent me this one to show you. I think they've used a lot, possibly in your little spray vials. Um, it's Uncle Serge, we love Uncle Serge. As always with Uncle Serge, things are displayed in rizzles and you don't get much information about the fragrance, uh, but it is predominantly amber, labdanum, vanilla, benzoin, that type of thing. It's quite spicy as well. And there may be a floral element in this too, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> maybe, it's, maybe it's the same Uncle Serge. Have you asked him if he actually makes perfume for a living? Just ask him that. Is the Zlig Limited Edition the same fragrance? Yes, it is. It's just in a slightly different bottle. I have the Fleur d'Oranger in the Zlig Limited Edition bottle, and it is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I love this one. I love this house. I hate the marketing copy that is getting Luca and Luca their wrist. Yeah, I, I, I am not a big fan of the marketing copy just because I love making fragrance accessible and I want it to make sense to people. And I think Serge Luterns want to make it mystical and strange, which I guess the whimsical aspect of that is important, but... I think, you know, you want to know what it smells like, really, don't you? Um, okay, so that's the one. This is, uh, if it was a place, where would it be? If I say it was a place, where would it be? Let me know. Is Cher Gui as good as everyone says? I've never understood the love for it, but everybody does love it. I would like to try it again. I haven't tried it in a very, very long time. Um, I think that's the thing about fragrance. Sometimes you have to try things at different points in your life because you have different, your nose develops, your taste develop. It's like food and wine, isn't it? And I think I used to be like this with leather perfumes. I used to hate leather. And then I kind of got into leather through 
like just very like not very leathery fragrances and then I got more and more leathery and I, oh, I really love a leather fragrance so it's funny I'd be interested to try that uh, Marrakesh Morocco fancy pub in Chelsea it's got to be Marrakesh I like it if you like Lair du Désert Moroccan yes that I love but cannot wear because I'm definitely allergic um a tattoo shack in Singapore during World War II beautifully specific I love that have a box have a box Marie I thought that was um, was it Marie was it Marie was it Marie Wendy sorry have a box Wendy the comments went too quickly. I thought that was quite interesting, quite funny, and quite specific. The burning pits of hell, says Chelsea. Uh, Fleur d'Orange is one of the most hypnotically beautiful fragrances ever. Absolutely, it really is. Ancient Egypt. Uh, Santa's workshop. Pat Sharp's pocket while he's on a bus tour in Marrakesh. Didn't know he'd been to Marrakesh. Thomas, I got into leather. Yes, Nick. Do what you want with that. Have fun with it. It's true. Um, we need to start a sexy church cult, says Gavin. Let's do it. Why not? Okay, we have confirmation. Zinnia's uncle Serge is not the same Serge. But we still love him anyway. So there we go. Ombre Sultan. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Lovely. Right, let's do fragrance B. Just need to check. Yes, this is a clean blotter. Always check your blotter to make sure it's clean. Always polish your flumber. There you go. B. Let's give this a spritz. <laughs> this does take me back. This does take me back. Right. B, what do we think of B? Do we like B? Do we hate B? Do we love B? Give me some thoughts. I'm ready and waiting. Prada vibes, interesting. Fizzy and lovely delicious. B has been a belter, agree. Michelle says she likes B so much she has none left. So Tiger Lily loves it. Brilliant. Yes, I get what you're saying, Christopher. It does feel much cooler, doesn't it? There's there's less warmth in there, I guess. Mm. Slapped in the face with a big bundle of white flowers. I mean, that could be quite fun. Exuberant, laughter of your dearest friends. Uh, I like like going back to 40 years. Mum, my mum in the 90s isn't for me, Van BB, Puzzle Bobby, a bit obsessed but can't decide whether I like it or not, says Sean. Uh, Rachel says, I like it but don't love it. Susie says, a honeyed hug. Mm. So we often talk about genres overlapping here at Central Sense, and I mentioned it at the beginning. And this is why it's a fragrance wheel. This is a warm fragrance with a floral twist. So I think you would call this a floral or a flumber. Um, and floral and warm fragrances have long been good friends. This one takes inspiration from the theatre, from makeup and wigs and nail polish and red velvet theatre seats. So it's quite a theatrical, exuberant fragrance. But really, it's all about the interplay of vanilla and powder and flowers. Um, so in the group, Gavin called it a floral bomb with lots of waxy tuberose and white flowers. Selena called it fizzy white flowers, adding that it had a Chanel vibe. Mairead said it was none, uh, It was more of an intense floral than a warm fragrance. And Sarah said it was melted butter and violets at first sniff, which I thought was really evocative. It starts with quite this like syrupy orange thing. It's quite fizzy and fresh and fun and glitzy, but there's this like syrupy orange thing going on in the top, a bit like canned or sugar glazed fruits. And then I kind of imagine big feather fans made from orange blossom petals and just so much face powder, just face powder everywhere. You can't move, um, for face powder. Uh, it's got creamy, decadent vanilla. It has a real womanly feel to it. It smells like a bustier cleavage soaked in perfume. That's what I get from it. I think it's really, really beautiful. Uh, it's that nail polish makeup vibe makes it interesting, Mia says. Uh, nighttime on a Spanish island with orange groves and night flowers on the breeze. Uh, it says, Hester said it's a bit hamstery. Big hair, big shoulder pads. I like it, but it's not me, says Wendy. Uh, interesting. Hmm. Shall I tell you what it is? Shall I tell you what it is? Okay, you ready? 
I'm going to put the bottle in front of the screen. Are you ready? Is this Histoire de Parfums Moulin Rouge? Mm, maybe it is. A cleavage with a small back heart tattoo. Yes. I get that, Kevin. It's like a cartoon woman, but I think that's what they were going for. Interesting. I like that description here. <laughs> I feel like Kate Moss would have smelled of this in the Depp days. I think we all smell like this in the Depp days. You ready? Okay, the fragrance is Classique Eau de Toilette by Jean-Paul Gaultier. It came out again in 1993 by the perfumer Jacques, Jacques Cavier. Um, it is £39.95 for a 30ml Eau de Toilette. Uh, it originally launched just as Jean-Paul Gaultier, and then the name was changed to Classique to sort of distinguish it from the other fragrances that would follow in the collection. Um, I love this quote from Jean-Paul Gaultier about the fragrance. He says, one part dusty loose powder, like my grandmother wore, I think it was old Coty. One part that smell you get when you're sitting in the front row of the theatre. For me, I think of going to the Chatelet when I was 12 and the curtain goes up and the hot lights are on the costumes, wigs and sets and you breathe it all in. And just to be modern, one part nail polish remover. So this is the Eau de Toilette, which I personally prefer to the Eau de Parfum. This was the original, the Eau de Parfum came later. I think it has more of a misty, airy quality that really gives that impression of, of face powder uh, in, in the air at the theatre. Uh, the Eau de Parfum is much richer and has more of that nail polish remover effect. Um, and it's good to go for if you liked this but you wanted a bit more oomph. Um, the bottle itself was actually inspired by Schiaparelli's Shocking, which was a dressmaker's dummy. Um, and this fragrance took obviously obvious inspiration from that. Um, and the tin can that it came in was also incredibly novel and some retailers actually refused to stock it because of the tin can. But uh, consumers loved it because it was different and it was new and it was fun. Um, they did a retrospective uh, of all the limited editions bottles back at, uh, in, at Harrods a few years back, I think for like the 20th anniversary. And it, you know, it was just the best thing ever to see all of those limited edition bottles, the Madonna Rockstar bottle, all the Bustiers. Um, yeah, I love this. I love Classique. I think it's just really, really beautiful. And it shows how warm fragrances can lean a bit more floral. But there you go. So, if fragrance uh, B was a celebrity, who would it be? Sorry, yes, Pugsley's doing lots of... Uh, he's kicking off in the background. I don't know what he's doing. I'm not in charge of the dog for this hour. I was in charge. And he's doing a fantastic job. Right, scrolling back through comments. Jessica Rabbit says, Siobhan, I wore this in high school and didn't recognise it in the trial. It happens. Never gets boring. Um, I'm not doing it. I was not going to do the quote in John Paul Gautier's voice. What's an evocative and fascinating description? Nigel likes that one because he's grunting in the background. That was Pugsley reverse sneezing, which is a pug thing, sorry. Um, the can, the flashbacks. I'm glad to get sample, I always wondered how it would smell like. Is what Christina smelled like in burlesque. Oh, I like that, Siobhan, yes. I used to pinch this from my sister, says Phoebe. Lady Gaga, Lady of the Gaga, yes, indeed. Dita Von Tees, yes. Napoleon. It's got to be Madonna in the comb bra, right? Tina, have a box, because you mentioned the magic word. The magic word is Madonna. That only works once per life. Chichester, says David. I think we're talking celebrities, not places, David. But it could be Chichester. Maybe the whole of Chichester smells like this. I don't know. Mae West, Helen Mirren, Aline. I like that. I like that. Okay, let's move on. Let's do C. Let's do C. Fragrance C. Clean butter. Get your flambers ready. I'm just going to keep saying that because it's funny. Okay, let's do fragrance C. Let's just spray a lot of fragrance C. Why not? Why not? What could go wrong if we spray lots of Steven says C is his favourite. Mm. Gavin loves C. Does Gavin love C? Does he? Does he? Does he? <laughs> no way I'm spraying it again. You do not have to. Spraying is absolutely optional. Susie says it was crushed coriander leaves at first. Oh, wow. Susie, I've never thought of it like that, but I totally get it. There is some like really like fresh herbal thing in the opening, isn't there? A lot can go wrong with too much C. Christopher has sprayed it on her foot for safety. 
If you spray too much, Gavin might smell it through the screen and never ever get rid of the scent of his skin ever again. Very medicinal. Yeah, I get that. Gavin gave it to the squirrels to bury. <laughs> so does C really need an introduction? It's one of the greatest fragrances of all time. Perhaps the first example of a blockbuster fragrance launch. And I think it's caused more than one controversy in its time. Uh, Lisa called it a spicy floral punch in the face. Monica said it made her feel weak, calling it spicy, bold, warm and comforting. Sophie called it leopard print and hairspray. Absolutely spot on. Mia called it androgynous. She said it smelled like big plastic earrings, back combed hair and shoulder padded lasers. Um, this fragrance may not be called Spice Bomb, but it sure is one. It's fantastically hot and spicy. There's all these like beautiful like cloves, uh, pepper and cinnamon up top. It feels like it's on fire. It feels like it's burning. And underneath that, it's very rich and intense. There's scorched roses and jasmine flowers, uh, kind of amongst glowing embers of patchouli and aponax. And it's it's just so heady and intense. But it slowly, slowly, very, very slowly unfurls to a soft, intimate uh, vanilla. Uh, the base is just exceptional. What a journey, though, to get there. Um, I think this works phenomenally, actually, as a modern masculine. I think it's really, really cool as a masculine. I think it was a feminine when it launched, but now it feels more masculine. Some of these big, um, sort of late 70s, 80s fragrances, these big spice bombs, these big warm amber fragrances do feel more masculine now. I feel that about Coco by Chanel. I feel that's a fantastic masculine now. Chris Bell says it's like Badger Jazz. Mm. Is your pooch on a peloton? No, he's got like a little Kong and he's eating some peanut butter from it because that's keeping him from being annoying. I love it because it's the opposite of Ariana Grande. Yeah, it's kind of like, it's not, it's not, yeah, it's, you know, Ariana Grande is very, very petite and pretty and high pitched and cute. And this is the opposite of this. This is like bold and brassy. Overpowering. <laughs> First time I'd sprayed it on it, I thought I could predict next week lottery numbers and saw colours. Hilarious. Uh, 80s in a bottle. Um, oh, okay. Um, so many people seem to hate it for the first time. Uh, for the first half of the box, it's good for me. All the first half of the box is good. It's very strong. This, I would say, is definitely a kind of a, a light sprayer, I would say. Okay, do you want to know what it is? I have lost the lid from the uh, top of the bottle. Well, I haven't lost it, it just fell under the sofa and I was running out of time to collect it. So it will be Son's lid. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, this fragrance is, of course, it's Opium, the Eau de Parfum by YSL. Uh, this came out in 1977. So this is kind of, this is, she's an old bird now. Um, it's £47.60 for a 30 minute Eau de Parfum. I think it's hard to ignore in terms of a warm amber fragrance or what we would call an O fragrance back in the day because it was so heavily inspired by chinoiserie and all the colours of um, uh, 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 like the very deep reds. Um, and yeah, it just epitomises the style for the modern age. Um, it is also an epitomizes the controversial style of YSL. The name was a real shock and obviously it has negative connotations and there was a real kind of backlash about that. But it also led to fragrances like Poison, which have these controversial names. Um, famously had an advert featuring a naked Sophie Dahl. And I think it really stood out at the time amongst the fragrances in the 70s, which were the very fresh, sporty green sheep of the 70s, like the Estee Lauder's private collection, the Chanel number no. 19s. So it caused a real olfactory shock. It was different. And it was a, it's a true spice bomb that puts all others to shame. It was very quickly followed by other fragrances that kind of did the same thing. Things like uh, uh, Dana Taboo, uh, Estee Lauder's Cinnabar, which actually many reports say that that was in development long before Opium, which they must have been very annoyed about uh, at, over at Lauder. It's a, it really, it's a modernization of Youth Dew from Estee Lauder, which is very balsamic, uh, slightly floral, spicy, uh, which came out obviously decades earlier. For the launch, uh, Yves Saint Laurent hired a ship called the, the Peking and filled it with a lot of decorations which 
would probably be a very poor taste today. And it was apparently quite the party with Truman Capote reported to be uh, the ship's at the ship's helm. Um, I think it's great. I, I wore this uh, the other day because I was kind of trying to uh, kind of put together my thoughts about what I wanted to say about this fragrance. And I really enjoy it when I wear it, but I have to be in the mood to wear it. But the dry down when you get there, it's just like heaven. And I always get compliments when I wear this, weirdly, which you think is interesting because you think everybody would know it. But not everybody does. It's because it's kind of a bit old now, but it's still great. And I love this new bottle with the little uh, rope on the inside. I would probably lean more for um, Coco by Chanel. I wear that quite regularly because that does a very similar thing. But whenever I wear this, I'm reminded of just how beautiful and daring it is. So if C was a uh, colour, what colour would it be? All right, let's go back over comments because we've been talking and I've missed all your interesting comments. Let's go. Right. Reminds me of Tweed, the perfume and fabric. Reminds me of my auntie who wore this and somehow smelled even stronger after she had a few whiskies. She sounds like quite a lot of fun. Um, this is what I imagine Angelica Houston wears. Yeah, totally agree, Manuela. Uh, Siobhan says, I can't believe I've never smelled this till now. Black Opium is one of my absolute favourite fragrances. Siobhan, how do you feel this compares? Do you like this? Do you not like it? Um, it feels so different from the way I remember it when I wore it back in the 80s. I think that's the biggest thing about opium. Um, lots of people always say that it's kind of been declawed. It smells very, very different now. I'm not really familiar with the original formulations. Nobody I knew in my family was a big opium person. They never really wore it. So I can't really comment, but absolutely. I mean, it's been, it's been on the market for a very long time now. So it will, of course, change quite considerably. Um, so Chris Bell, now you've tried it. You've tried opium now. And I don't know whether that was a good experience or a bad experience. Um, Gavin's still traumatized because the teacher wore it. Um, Tiger Lily says, careful, I'm an even older bird. I will be very careful. Uh, Black Opium is the glittery bottle and it's very different. It's almost a completely different fragrance. It's it's a gourmand, really. Um, completely different. My friend used to wear a wave wear this. It's not for me, but I like the way it reminds me of her. That's what's wonderful about fragrance. Uh, used to have a fantastic tassel, which I still have draped in my jewelry box. Yes, the Pure Parfum, which I think they still might do. I'm not sure. Um, they uh, That comes with a tassel. Uh, I knew I recognised it. Uh, I used to steal this from my mum when I was about 10. Obviously, there's no way she didn't realise. Well, I mean, you literally reek of opium. She'd know. Haha, <laughs> it was just opium. I said it was opium in bubble bath. Interesting. Cinnabar is better, says Susie. Sacrilege. I actually haven't smelled Cinnabar in years, so I will need to do another com uh, another um, comparison, I think. But Cinnab uh, Cinnabar, from my memory, is a little bit softer, isn't it, Susie? I don't think it's less, less of a punch in the face. Um, another fab fragrance. I thought it was interesting when Kate Moss was the face of it when he had to have a resurgence of the noughties. I don't think it would work. I don't think it worked though. Which is imagine why they developed Black Opium. Yeah, and Black Opium came out within the last decade. Um, the fact that it's polarizing, potentially offensive, makes me want to wear it. Agreed. Love Cinnabar, from everything I need to buy myself bottles. Saffron yellow. Okay, we're getting to the colors now. Space Hopper Orange, says Eileen. Eileen, have a box because I think Space Hopper Orange is such a specific color. I knew exactly what you meant when you said it. Have a box. I love that. My father's mistress wore youth to you and one year at Christmas he actually gave the box to my mum. We askew youth to you in this house. Susie, there is a story there. Susie. Wow. Crimson, dirty yellow. Wow. I'm still stuck on Susie's story. Um, I know this, I've seen them. It was brown and then green and orange. Hot June lunar midday sun, any damn colour it wants to be because it's opium and it'll do what it wants. I do really like it. I actually love how different it is from Black Opium. So different. Different worlds. Your mum's a Poison fan. Yeah. Change my mind. It's still too far from Aladdin. Okay, I'm really behind the points. I'm not averse to a bit of Cristal. Mmm. I never really like Cristal, but I love 19. I'm obsessed. 19 is one of my favourite fragrances. I wear that all the time. Opium makes my dog have sneezing fits. I can see why. Yeah, Susie does need to write a book. Absolutely. I, I'm convinced Susie will write a book one day. Susie can do a book. Let's get Susie to do a book. I'd like to write a book, but I don't think I have the, the attention span to write one. Uh, but Susie would do a fantastic book. Oh, Mia says my baby cried when I was wearing it and cuddled her. That's the effect of opium. It is quite the tour de force. Right, let's move on to D. Just checking my bottom. Nope, that I think has got something on it.
we want an audio book, yeah, because Susie has got a rather wonderful voice that is really good to listen to, as we know from her On The Scent podcast, available on all good podcast hosting places. Susie started a book in lockdown. There you go. Susie's doing a book. Susie's doing a book. You can buy it next year. There. I'm giving you a deadline, Susie. Right, let's do D. Time for D. Let's go. Mm. I love this one. I love D. What do we think of D? Do we enjoy D? I do. Selena says it's wrong. It smells like the inside of a charity shop. Oh, interesting. It's like sucking a sherbet lemon while walking down a freshly cleaned hospital corridor carrying a baby dust in baby powder. Gavin, have you actually done that? Because that sounds like that's coming from some kind of scent memory place. Marzipan and man sweat, says Ellie. D was my church scent of the four. Mia really loves this. Lemongrass, says Anna. Dry, bright, zesty. Eileen says it's the nicest of the first half. D is an old love that I'd almost forgotten. Larissa says, I thought D was a fougere fragrance. Really interesting. It has a real green element to it, don't you think? And I think that's probably what you're picking up on because it does have that little bit of shoppiness, doesn't it? Boozy, medicinal, furniture polish. It's a bit musty, says Amy on skin. Powder fresh, sweet, powerful, punchy fragrance, a delicious delight. The inside of Ikea, according to my daughter, says Tina. Interesting. Phoebe didn't enjoy this one. I did also just get a bit of Play-Doh. Yeah, there's a kind of marzipan thing in there. Fizzy, powdery, camphory goodness, uh, being arse drunk at the end of a party, says Aline. Aline knows how to have a good time. That's what that's what we've established. Uh, she wants to she thought mossy. Furniture polish, smells like a night out on holiday, new key. Stood the test of time, say Mia, which is, a which is a surprise because I can't remember liking it before. I agree. So I know this fragrance very, very well. I've never worn it myself. Um, and then the bottle came through for this um, and I thought, oh, I'll just a bit of that on. It's been a long time since I've worn this fragrance. And I tell you, I have worn basically nothing since for the last couple of weeks. I really, really enjoy it. Um, so it's another modern classic. I'd say it's more of a floral amber, as, as you call, know we call it, a flamber or flamber. But unlike B, it doesn't go, it, it goes a bit more full throttle, I think and it amples up the intimacy. It's a blockbuster fragrance again that made a massive mark. Uh, Manuela said it smelled like woolen jumpers that had been stored with mothballs for months, but she said that she still liked it. Sophie called it cozy with a hint of Pledge. Fun fact, Pledge is actually an amber. The fragrance that is used in Pledge is actually inspired by Shalimar. That's why when you sometimes smell a fragrance, you think, oh, that's a bit like Pledge or furniture polish, because they're trying to make furniture polish smell really fancy like Shalimar. Um, and that's why we have that association. There you go, just to let, just to let you know. Uh, Kirsten found it quite animatic. I did, I WhatsApped, uh, WhatsApped Charles to say how much I loved it. I was like, I'd forgotten about how good this was. I enjoy it. So what does it smell like? So it's orange and spice to begin with, absolutely. But for me, it's quite subtle. I don't think those are like the core themes. They're more like nuances. There's this soft powdery element to it. This waxy, rubbery textured vanilla, a white floral effect. A flash of greenery. I feel like it's quite grassy. It's quite fresh and green. Um, and then you get the scent of human warmth nuzzling into the neck of a loved one. Salty skin, kind of a caramel texture and glowing intense warmth. I think it's really beautiful. And I think it has really stood the test of time. I don't think, opium I think we all know smells like of a certain time. I don't particularly think this is that dated. Susie says the saltiness, I agree. Uh, effortlessly effervescent. That's an incredible fact about Pledge. There you go, I'm full of incredible facts. Uh, it's an amber fragrance in Pledge. They want it to smell nice. It's the way that we always say number five smells a bit soapy. Well, that's because number five was so popular, people made soaps that smell like number five. And now our association with soap is number five. Um, what Susie said? Susie said, S is really sexy, a cliff top encounter with a hero from a romantic novel who wraps you in his cake before having his entirely consensual way with you. What, what what do you mean by his cake? I know what I understand someone's cakes to be. I'd love to be wrapped in a cake, says Nick. We can arrange that, Nick, don't worry. DM me after, Nick, and we'll sort that out. Uh, it's addictive, it's a bit medicinal. It's so medicinal, says Gavin. 
Yeah, I get the medicinal thing. Aline says, I wish it lasted longer. The old version was much more long lasting. Yeah, so I was reading a lot about this, um, this fragrance, and people were saying that it was a real powerhouse, and I think it's quite subtle and soft. And that's what I like about it, actually. I think it shows that we don't have to have these massive powerhouse fragrances. Susie says it smells like it could have been launch recently. Launch recently. I would give up. Launch recently, I agree. Uh, Pledge and Amber, now we see B is still the best. Cape, 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 tiger lily. Oh, his cape. Did I say, oh, you meant cape. Yeah, but you've wrapped him in his, he's wrapped you in his cakes now. It's a sweeter scent, a sweater scent. I can't read today. The dry down is quite similar to Addict, same vanilla. Much better on the bottom than me than on me, says Hester. Gin and cat pee on initial spray. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. You're all, what you're all saying to me is valid. I understand. Right, do you want to know what it is? A flombered cake, yes. Was it his cake he wrapped you in or his flomber? I'm gonna stop, I'm stop, it's just becoming a bit too rude. Um, okay, this fragrance is, ba -ba -ba -da. is New Raunch is a future essential box, yes. <laughs> yes it is, we will have one. Um, okay, this fragrance is, doo -doo -doo -doo. Obsession for Women by uh, Calvin Klein. Um, this came out in 1985, would you believe? And it is 43 pounds 35. Uh, for a 50 ml eau de parfum. This was Calvin Klein's third fragrance, but it was actually their first blockbuster success. They launched Calvin Klein for women and Calvin Klein for men um, beforehand, but they didn't really make much of an impact. Uh, Calvin Klein himself called it a big, he, called it, he said he called it big like a movie poster of this era, that era being the 80s. Um, it was briefed to the perfumers as sensuality with a touch of warmth and class with a touch of trash. Do you think they delivered on that? I think class with a touch of trash is perhaps why I like it. That's kind of, I feel like that's very new. Um, it was also famed for its black and white adverts, which are very 90s supermodel in style, photographed by Mario Sorrenti and starring a young Kate Moss, whose career the campaign launched. Less of a straightforward warm than opium, I would say. This is a warm ambery floral. Uh, famously one of those perfumes that was worn by everyone in the late 80s, early 90s, and probably with a few sprays too many. I think it smells really current. I don't think it's very dated. And I have to say, I've built, basically worn nothing else for the last couple of weeks. And if this was a song, what song would it be, people? Uh, Phoebe says, I thought this was A. Uh, we've got no cake. Uh, Chelsea's having an arrow. Please share the arrow. I like arrows. Is it a mint arrow, though? Is it a mint arrow, though? Uh, loved Obsession when it launched, for men when it launched. Haven't smelled it in decades. I like Obsession for men. My dad used to wear Obsession for men. So that's like aftershave man smell to me. I uh, thought it was there when Chelsea mentioned uh, that hint on the Tuesday Live. Oh, yes, I did say I was obsessed with the fragrance. Um, um, mm, 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 strawberry Fields. Okay, sorry, I'm going back. I'm going back. Uh, I did not expect it to be that. Never smelled Obsession, and it's not at all what I thought it would smell like. I'm definitely going to buy it. Joyce prefers the men's. Hester's saying that Susie's X-rated. Tell us something we don't know. Uh, Susie always wants cake. Would not have guessed that, says Amy. It smells better after a second spray halfway through. Uh, Eileen just says no, exclamation mark. I didn't like it when it came out and I still don't, says Leah. Fair enough, consistency is key, I think. Um, okay, so we're going back to song. Strawberry Fields, Passion Beyond Reason, wore this a lot in the late 80s, early 90s. Can we suggest a box theme for next year at Cake Box, please? We can do our best. Train by Goldfrap, says Aline. I love that song. Other magic word Aline is Goldfrap. Have a box. Um, your dad, thanks for that. <laughs> I mean it like, he's not that old. My dad is like five or six years older than me. Don't worry. Uh, Susie, you're asking your phone over you. Susie, you heard the podcast. Indeed. Uh, massive rock ballad. I want to know what love is. Saturday Night Fever. I love that song. Oh, well, I have to get this one to my mum. She already stole the sample from my box. Gourmand next month should be cakey. It might be a little bit cakey. Uh, big hair and big cakes. It's fascinating more unisex than you suppose. Yeah, absolutely. I've, worn it, I've been wearing it late. I really, really like it. And when this is run out, I will probably buy a new bottle. There you go. Fragrance D. Anything by Cake Bush. All right, David, have a box for Cake Bush. I have to give it. I'm a, I'm a Cake Bush fan. I 
I'm trying to think of Cambridge puns now, but it's not working. So, I'm going to do a recap. So we started off with our wonderful amber fragrance, which was Ombre Sultana by Sergio Thomas. Very straightforward amber, a bit more spicy, a little uh, kind of fiery and uh, very Moroccan in style, which is £99 for a 50ml eau de parfum. Then we did more of a floral warm, uh, which was our classic eau de toilette by Jean Paul Gaultier, which is very powdery, floral with orange blossom, but also has a beautiful sort of vanilla note and amber thing going on in the base. Um, and this one is, I believe, £39.95 for 30 ml eau de toilette. Then, of course, we did opium. We had to do opium. It's law. By law, we have to do opium. Um, and that's £47.60 for a 30 ml eau de parfum. A spice bomb with flowers, resins, and everything you can shoe on to a fragrance. And then we finished off with the slightly understated, strange, sort of powdery, amber, musky, intimate, with a flash of green, strangeness that is Obsession for Women by Calvin Klein, which I just think is fantastic and phenomenal. Kate Bush does protect her flamber, well done Susie, it's true. Um, Gavin, I second that. A is the first half winner for me. Indeed, seems lots of people love that. Yeah, let me know in the box. Just type A, B, or C, A, B, C, or D to tell me what your favourite is. So just be interested to know. No, lots of Bush from Bay. Um, we're still doing lots of love for Kate Bush because that's hilarious. It's been an essential world, but social times I'm afraid can get out of my house. C will never be mine. The one box has been Babushka and Wow Moments of Pleasure. Okay, I'm gonna have to give you a box, Anna, because you have named so many. Kate Bush songs. And there were some deep cuts in there, like Get Out of My House, which is one of my, it's from my favourite album, The Dreaming. So, box. I don't know how many I've given away. I might have given away six. If I've given away six, I apologise. Uh, okay, so we've got, let's just do like, I'm doing a straw poll. And this is a really bad idea for a straw poll because I can't count. Hmm, I'm kind of, it seems quite even, really. I would say A is probably winning. Yes, we do have a we do have a discount code, I believe, that ends tonight. That's a very good point. That is a very good point. Uh, yes, ten percent off all orders over seventy pounds. Um, extra fifteen percent of orders off over one hundred and twenty. So with um, essential ten and essential fifteen, just to let you. Know. Right, let's have a look. A, I think A is probably the winner, but the rest are quite evenly split. Lots of love for A and B. I would say C's probably, I don't know, I don't know. I think pretty even. And the great thing is now you can just spend the next week trying them. Now you know what they are. You can have a think about what you think of them. Try them again. Now you know what they are and what they do and what everyone thinks of them. Give them a spritz, try them again. It does, it ends tonight. It does, the discount ends tonight. Ah, oh, I love this. I'm gonna spray some of this on my neck. Oh. Mm, I love it. Okay, last couple of bits to wrap up then. Uh, the next live is on the 25th of November. I will see you then. Next box is Gourmand, um, which is on sale now. Um, and yeah, I will see you all soon. Is a flumber similar to a plumbus? Um, DM me, Nick, and I'll tell you. Uh, just go back to E from last month. What was last month? What did we do last month? We did new, and I can't remember what E was. What was E last month? Somebody tell me. I can't remember. How bad is that that I can't remember? E was... Mm, oh, E was Aqua de Palma, wasn't it? It was Aqua de Palma, the oud and spice. I did remember. And it's nice that evening spreaders, we'd also be so sad if the stock of one ran out. We would. Can we have a smoky box, please? Mm, maybe. Maybe you can have a smoky box. That would be a nice box. Um, we can do all sorts of boxes. If you want particular themes just let us know and we'll consider it we might not say yes but we might absolutely consider it okay i'm gonna leave you all now thank you so much for a wonderful live as always really enjoyed chatting with you uh, really glad to talk warms and ambers and flams and flambers with you um i look forward to doing the next half of the box in all the wear days no gavin we cannot have a sexy priest box i'm sorry just can't sign off on that 
Um, we need to. We would need to get Andrew Scott to approve it as the sexy priest from Fleabag, and I just don't know if we've got those connections. Thank you, everybody. Have a lovely weekend. Um, I will see you soon. Um, keep up the lovely chat in the group, and um, yeah, if you do buy any of them or if you have any further thoughts on them, let us know. I always like to see what people are kind of thinking in the group, so just let me know. See you later, guys. Bye bye.